today I have gotten this question an awful lot and I just figured I would hop on here and answer it. Uh, for all those ladies out there who are transitioning toward the feminine side of the spectrum, uh, everyone seems to want to know what is this going to do to my libido, sexuality, and whatnot while I'm on estrogen therapy? Um, and of course your mileage may vary type answer. You know, everybody's going to be going the same uh, kind of direction but not experiencing the exact same uh, side effects and, and whatnot because, you know, everybody has something different that interests them in sexual activity and whatnot. So eh, essentially those things don't exactly go away. They just change. So here's what happens in the body while you're on estrogen therapy as a good primer. Estrogen levels are going to be going up. They're going to be rising, of course, because you're taking estradiol usually. Uh, and then your T levels are going to be dropping. Now, T is more often associated with the aggressive side of sexuality, uh, and it has been uh, determined as a factor in human sexuality, although, you know, scientifically speaking, nobody knows the exact, like, here is what each little thing does in uh, creating an individual's libido. So there's no exact answer someone can point to and say, aha, if you have a T level of here and an E level of here, then this will equal this type of libido or anything like that. Like there's there's just no way to predict that. Because obviously some cisgender women who have testosterone levels that are only in the 40s uh, are just as ag aggressive uh, sexually, if, you know, some people would term it that anyway, uh, <laughs> as say a cisgender male who has a testosterone level uh, in the 500, 600, 700 range. Uh, so there's obviously great variation in how uh, libido and desire and everything comes into play. But essentially estrogen levels go up, T levels go down. During this initial period, usually like the first three to six months or so, you will see significant drop off of uh, sexual interest and desire. And I mean, <laughs> you're going through a period of change, uh, much like teenagers are going through their you know, first puberty, you're going to be going through a second puberty and figuring things out yet again. How annoying, right? Um, but that's how it is. Uh, you're going to have your hormone levels raging up and down. Uh, the hormone that your body was used to depending upon, testosterone, is now not going to be uh, quite as proliferative in, uh, in numbers. And so your body is going to have to learn to depend on estrogen instead for most of its metabolic activity and drive and everything like that. So um, you're going to go through this period of adjustment and generally speaking, and not to paint everyone with the same you know, broad brush or anything, but uh, a pattern that I see reported over and over again to me by my several hundred patients that I uh, treat with uh, hormones is that uh, they have a resurgence or rekindling of their libido, sexual desire, uh, what have you, whatever you want to term it, by around one year or so. Uh, sometimes a little bit later, I mean it depends on the person obviously, but Generally speaking, what they find is that things have just changed for them and they needed time to adjust and figure things out. So um, what I mean by that is, say, you know, before, whenever it was a more uh, testosterone-driven uh, libido, perhaps uh, the person might have been, you know, turned on uh, visually, you know, see someone, ooh, you know, that person's hot, and, you know, the mental images go on and then you're turned on, like, no question. And now, rather than being just visually stimulated, perhaps you're more cognitively stimulated by uh, interacting with an individual, you know, um, they make you laugh, or you really like the way that uh, they, I don't know, care for other people or something, and it's just a little bit different than how you used to be turned on. And that's not to make it sound like, you know, uh, the stereotypical men are only visual creatures and women are only, you know, going to be stimulated <laughs> intellectually or whatever. I'm not trying to make women seem superior over that. It's just an example. Um, but that is something that is reported to me over and over um, from my film patients is that um, they, they tend to go through this period of adjustment and when they come out the other end, they find that while their sexual interests um, and their actual orientation generally stays the same, whether they identify it as uh, lesbian or pansexual or asexual or whatever, that tends to be the same at the other end, but the actual manner and how they experience uh, sexual desire and what actually gets to them uh, and how quickly it can happen 
uh, tends to be what changes. Uh, and every now and then you will run into someone who is having continuous issues, and there are certain things you can do medically uh, for that person if uh, if they so desire. Uh, because you know, whenever your E goes up and your T goes down, depending on where those levels lie, uh, you could end up with some certain functional problems with the downstairs area, and uh, you might need some medicinal help, such as like Cialis or Viagra or something like that, to kind of get things started. Uh, or you might need to actually talk to your healthcare provider about playing around with your doses of your actual estrogen and, and what have you, because you may need to let that T level uh, ride a little bit higher in your body than it currently is, uh, just to see if that will kind of rekindle some, uh, some ability down there um, if you're having actual physical difficulty um, with sexual acts. So... Um, Whenever you're thinking about that, uh, you know, if you have any questions or anything and you want to throw them at me, certainly feel free to, you know, there's literally nothing I haven't heard. Uh, I have, you know, done a good bit of study on this, but there's a lot of just experiential stuff out there that I get from, you know, the several hundred patients that I'm treating that is just invaluable knowledge. Uh, and, you know, it's free for all. If you write to me and you want to know something, no problem. Just hit me up. Okay. So y'all stay safe and have fun, all right? Bye.